how do we make our decisions? More often than we like, most of us are forced with choices that can have serious and lasting impact on our lives. Do we go along with crowd? Do we tell someone off, quit a job, stand firm, etc.? Unfortunately, some of our decisions sometimes are not preceded by warning and some balance because we often don't have time to figure out what to do. So most bad decisions are made impulsively or without sufficient reflection and mess up our lives. It's not always easy to do the right thing. Sometimes you're forced to choose between standing for truth or yielding the pressure of friends, co-workers, or even family who would rather make your comp compromises. Don't make decisions when you're angry, happy, or sad. Count to 10 when you're angry or to think ahead. Anger and pre-planning are the two factors that can impede excellent decision-making. Fatigue, fear, frustrations, stress, and impatience also create obstacles to wise choices. There's no gray area when it comes to right and wrong. Someone once said, I'd rather stand with God and be condemned by the world than stand with the world and be condemned by God. You either belong to Jesus or you don't. It's that simple. Be aware that making decisions which are pleasing to God won't always make others happy. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. There is nothing that is worth missing out on heaven. Absolutely nothing. That's why it's important to spend time with God every day. Make sure you have a healthy diet of spiritual food, which includes being careful what you eat, what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, and the people you hang around with. Choose godly friends, ones that will draw you closer to Jesus, not pull you away. C.S. Lewis wrote, What draws people to be friends is that they see the same truth. They share it. Distance yourself from people who try influence you for evil purposes. They are not your real friends. You can love them, forgive them, want good things for them, and still move on without them. Instead, surround yourself with people who inspire you, love and respect you, pray for you, and protect you. Surround yourself with people who want to see you grow closer to Christ. Six Steps to Good Decision Making First step, identify your goal. Second, pray for your goal or for your decision. Three, gather information for weighing your options. Four, consider the consequences that may take place with your decision. Five, make your decision. And six, evaluate your decisions. Once you have made your final decision and put it into action, it is necessary to evaluate the decision and the steps you have taken to ensure that it works. This final step is probably just as important as step one, if not more important, because it will help you to further develop your decision-making skills for future problems. Most of all, include God in all your decisions. Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17, Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Proverbs 27 verse 9, Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives the light by hearty counsel. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25 
and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Our Heavenly Father, your word says that if anyone lacks wisdom, they should ask and you will give them generously. I am about to make a huge decision in my life, but I don't know how to go about it. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your wisdom. Lead me, Lord, in that way that I should go, that I may be able to bring glory to your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen.